integrals are not only useful for finding areas, but also for computing lengths of curves. More specifically, consider the length of the curve that is given by the graph of a function f over the interval a, b. Well, this length of that arc is given by the definite integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus the square of f prime of x dx. So here we are squaring the derivative of f and then we add 1 to that square, take the square root and then integrate from a to b. Now the way to obtain this integral formula is by taking the limit of the broken line approximation to the length. So that is obtained by taking the graph of the function, subdividing the interval a, b into smaller subintervals, therefore obtaining points on the graph of the function that we can connect using straight line segments. And uh, each straight line segment is the hypotenuse of a right triangle with legs of length, length delta x and delta y. Delta x is just the length of each subinterval, and delta y is the change in the values of the function between the two points on the graph of the function. Now, therefore, the hypotenuse can be computed using Pythagoras as the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. So that's those lengths of hypotenuse is what we are adding up to get the broken line approximation to the length of the graph of the function between a and b. And then all we need to do is take this sum and factor out a delta x from underneath the uh, square root. When we do that, we obtain under the square root 1 plus delta y over delta x squared. And then outside the square root, we have delta x. And when delta uh, x goes to 0, that is when n goes to infinity, we have this difference quotient um, tends to the derivative of the function. Therefore, we get this integral formula. OK, let's compute some arc lengths. Which integral can be used to find the circumference of a circle of radius r? Pause the video, select your answer, and then evaluate the integral that you selected. Hope you paused it and I've selected this integral. So to find the circumference of a circle of radius r, we may use the function f of x equals the square root of r squared minus x squared. If we let x vary between uh, 0 and r, the graph of that function is, a, is the quarter circle of radius r centered at the origin that is in the first quadrant of the xy plane. Therefore, the arc length of that is a quarter of the uh, total circumference of the circle. Therefore, we get the length the circumference of the circle if we multiply the arc length of that um, curve by 4. So that arc length is given by the definite integral from 0 to r of, well, the square root of 1 plus the derivative of f squared dx. So let's compute what this uh, derivative is. The derivative of f is, can be found to be minus x over the square root of r squared minus x squared. Therefore, its square, the square of the derivative, is simply the square of this function is x squared over r squared minus x squared. And therefore, this integral can be written as 4 times the integral from 0 to r of the square root of 1 plus that square, so that's x squared over um, r squared minus x squared dx. Um, bringing it to a common denominator uh, leaves us with r squared minus x squared plus x squared in the numerator, and in the denominator we have r squared minus x squared dx. Here minus x squared and plus x squared cancel, and we are left with uh, 4 times the integral from 0 to r of the square root of r squared, so that's just r, divided by the square root of r squared minus x squared dx. Now here we can use a trigonometric substitution and let uh, x be r times the sine of theta. That means that dx is r times the cosine of theta d theta. And as x changes from 0 to r, that means the sine of theta is changing from 0 to 1, therefore theta changes from, varies from 0 to pi over 2. And what we get for the integral is 4 times, well, that factor of r I will pull out, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 
of 1 over the square root of r squared minus x squared, but that in terms of, in terms of theta is just 1 over r times the cosine of theta using trigonometric identities. Del dx is r times the cosine of theta d theta. So r times the cosine of theta nicely cancels, and we are left with the integral of 1 from 0 to pi over 2, but that is just pi over 2. Well, it is multiplied by 4r, therefore we get, in the end, 2 pi r, as expected. Let's look at the next question. Find the length of the arc of the logarithmic curve that is y equals the natural logarithm of x as x varies from root 3 to root 8. So pause the video, compute the length of this curve, and input your answer in the box correct to two decimal places. Okay, I hope you paused the video and found this length to be 1.2 approximately. So what we need is consider the function f of x equals the natural logarithm of x. Uh, its derivative therefore is 1 over x and it's the square of the derivative that we need in the, in the arc length formula. So let's square 1 over x to get 1 over x squared. Now uh, when we set up the arc length integral, we need to consider the definite integral from root 3 to root 8 of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared, so that's 1 plus 1 over x squared dx. Now that uh, integrand we can write as with a common denominator of um, x squared as the square root of x squared plus 1 all divided by x squared, uh, but taking the square root of x squared gives us x in the denominator, and then we may use the substitution uh, u equals the square root of x squared plus 1, therefore uh, u squared minus 1 under the square root gives us x, um, and that means that um, u over the square root of u squared minus 1 du is what dx is, and furthermore, as x varies um, between root 3 and root 8, the corresponding u values change between well, root 3 squared, that's 3, plus 1, that's 4, under the square root, that's 2. So between 2 and uh, x being root 8 means root 8 squared, that's 8, plus 1, that's 9, under the square root, that's 3. So u changes between u and 3. So what we get for this arc length integral in terms of u is uh, the integral from 2 to 3 of, well, what we have in the numerator is what we called u, so that's u, divided by x that we found to be the square root of u squared minus 1, uh, dx, which we found to be u divided by the square root of u squared minus 1, du. Now, uh, multiplying these uh, expressions, we get the integral from 2 to 3 of u squared over u squared minus 1 du. Um, we can insert a minus 1 and then a plus 1 in the numerator to write the integrand in a sl slightly simpler form, namely uh, subtracting 1 and adding 1, then grouping the terms in this way lets us divide by u squared minus 1 term by term and to get a somewhat simpler expression, namely the integral from 2 to 3 of 1 plus 1 over u squared minus 1 du. And so that's uh, the integral of 1, um, that's just u, it's changed from 2 to 3 is 2 minus 3, so that's just a, uh, a 1 um, plus the integral from 2 to 3 of uh, 1 over u squared minus 1 du. Now, uh, this, integr this integrand can be uh, decomposed using partial fractions. The, the denominator u squared minus 1 factorizes as u minus 1 times u plus 1, and therefore we can use the partial fractions um, constant over u minus 1 and constant over u plus 1, uh, the u. Now, the, uh, the uh, coefficients that go in the numerators are a half, and negative a half. So this uh, is a bit, this I can, we can evaluate in terms of basic integrals, we get 1 plus a half times the natural logarithm of the modulus of u minus 1 minus a half times the natural logarithm of the modulus of 
uh, u plus 1. Now this is what is change between 2 and 3 we need to evaluate. Before we do that we can actually express this um, difference of logarithms in using the laws of logarithms as a half times uh, the natural log of u minus 1 over u plus 1 and then its change as u goes from 2 to 3 will be found to be 1 plus a half times while u is equal to 3 then we get uh, 3 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 that's 2 over 4 that's a half so ln of half uh, minus it's the natural logarithm of 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 that's 1 third we can simplify this further if you if we want to as 1 plus use laws of logarithms again to split these up into uh, in logarithms of integers namely we get um, 1 plus a half times the natural logarithm of 3 minus the natural logarithm of 2 if you compute it using your calculator you get approximately 1.20 I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one